how to ensure your car door window seal wipes away water from the glass and reduce road noise in cabin at the same time. If you watched this video, you may remember I referred to road noise that comes in from other vehicles, which is what we are cutting out today. My car door water seal along the waist of the door has deteriorated in typical fashion. The internal steel carrier has rusted, which is just plain ugly. The glass seal flip has lost some of its strength with age and the flange they are mounted to has crept outboard with pressure from the glass system. First thing to do is remove the door waste seals from the car. On most cars, this is easy to do by lifting the seal off the outer skin flange with the window down, by the way. On some cars, you might need to remove the mirror and other trim. Although on, luckily on this Saab, the waste seal only goes a few millimeters underneath the mirror, so it's easy enough to get off. If you put the window back up about halfway or so, and then measure from the flange to the glass at various points along the length of the door, you'll probably find that you've got an inconsistent gap. I'm varying from 10 millimeters at the front here to 12 millimeters at the back here. And what I want to achieve is having a consistent gap, about 10 millimeters as it happens, all the way along. And that will ensure a consistent contact between the waste seal and the glass when the glass is shut, which will help to keep road noise out. And when you wind the window down and back up again, it'll also maintain a consistent contact with this flip seal that will push against the glass and wipe water off the glass. And this is the tool that I'm going to use to bend the flange back in. When I was a young pup in door systems at Rover Group, we, had, we, had, we used to have a special tool specifically for this job. Thank you, Eric, and possibly Martin as well for teaching me about it. If you are into metal work or body repairs, you may well have some wide jawed grips that you use for connecting panels together, in which case you could use those. I haven't got any, so I've bought a pair of these. This is actually a tool for use in leather work, but it's got wide jaws, about 40 millimeters wide. And the trick here is to put them on the flange, squeeze really, really hard, and then lift up on the outside just to bend the flange inwards ever so slightly. Try and do it consistently all along and try and make sure as well that you get the jaws fully engaged with the flange so that you're bending the flange at the bottom there and not just part way up. At the back end of the door, do be uh, careful. You might find that your tool touches the glass slightly. Be careful not to press it too hard and break it. The glass is actually very difficult to break and these are smooth, but nevertheless, just be careful. Maybe put a bit of tape on there. Go easy doing it and double check your work I'm getting a gap now of around about 10.7 at the back end here and still 10 at the front. So I just need to give it just a little bit more to get it even at about 10. Fold your mirror forwards so you get better access at the front end if necessary. Depending on the car model, it may be necessary to actually remove the mirror in order to get good access. But you might have had to remove the mirror to get the seal off in the first place. At the back end of the door here, I can tell that there's a very slight air gap between the seal and the uh, door frame because there's a lot of dirt on the frame down there, it, which would be inside the seal. And you can bet that if water and dirt can get in there, then so can air that's travelling past your car at 70 miles an hour, creating wind noise. So all of that is an area you want to seal up. Now I can't get my tool in here to push this flange closer to the door frame, so I'm just going to uh, use a block of wood and a medium weight hammer. Make sure that you put the block of wood square, then lift this end up ever so slightly. That way you're hitting the top end and it'll bend along that bend there. Keep checking your work as you go. And I've now managed to get a nice consistent gap of between 5.8 and 5.9 along there. You are only tickling it just to move it in ever so slightly so that you get better contact between the seal and whatever's behind it. Before putting your seal back on, give the area a clean. No need for it to be surgically clean, but uh, whilst you've got the seal off, you might as well. One of the things I noticed here is that there was, there's dirt all the way up this flange right to the very top, which tells me the water is getting in there. So I'm going to do something to stop that. And the way I'm going to achieve that is by applying a very thin, roughly one millimeter or so wide bead of high quality silicon sealer down the inside of the seal carrier. So that when I fit it on, 
it will squeeze all the way down round the flange and particularly on the top of the flange. Door mirrors are also a uh, very common source of wind noise, particularly around the sail here where it attaches to the door frame. So if you have had to take the mirror off in order to get your waste seal off, put a bead of sealer all the way around the periphery before you put it back on. And then once it's all bolted up, if any squeezed out, smooth it away and remove it with your finger. And refit your waste seal the opposite way to the way you got it off. Press it onto the flange. Press it down hard to make sure that it goes all the way and use a plastic or rubber hammer. If you haven't got a plastic or rubber hammer and you need to use an ordinary hammer, then use a block of wood. Now where I've put this back, I've ended up with it overhanging the end of the door a little here. So I'm going to use my block of wood and my hammer to push it forwards. Despite my best efforts, I still ended up with a small gap here between the seal and the door finisher. So I'm going to close that gap off with a little silicon sealer. If you have used any sealer with the door waste seals, allow the sealer a couple of hours to set before you close the window back up. That way it'll set into its natural position and you'll get better pressure on the window. If you got value from this video, consider supporting the channel in some way and I shall see you next time.